morning here, especially after all this rain, is really amazing. We've got to, so many different birds singing, insects waking up. You can see all the footprints on the road from all the animals who've been walking around at night. Leopards, hyenas, lion right here. So we're very lucky and, uh, you know, it is a very special place to be in the bush and see all the, the plants at the moment growing, just starting to flower. So, huge privilege. Pollinators are really important because one in three bites of food is thanks to a pollinator. Most of these pollinators in Kenya are insects, wild insects. These include bees, butterflies, hawk moths, flies, thousands of different species. What we depend to you is Tafanya. Sana sana, custom we believe we went to in Tafanya to be pollinia my indicator. Hata ukichukua mzee sasa hii muulize hii nini pole ninatokaje huko ikikuje huko kwa kwa mahindi kuchini atakwambia ni baridi tu m mm. upepo ndio nafanya hawezi kukwambia mamba hii insect <laughs> pollinators visit plants to feed on nectar in many cases and also pollen this powdery yellow material is the pollen. This is the essence of life that insects are transferring from one flower to another. In dry lands, like here in Lycipia, hundreds of different species of plants are dependent on pollinators. And some of the most important ones that are managed and used by communities, both as forage for animals as well as directly by households, are pollinator dependent. So if we think about the acacias, all of the acacias that we can see here behind me, these are plants that are pollinated primarily by bees. Bees are amongst the most important group of pollinators. They are very diverse. Kenya has over a thousand species of different bees. Most people think there's only one or two bee species, things like honeybees or stingless bees or carpenter bees, but there are hundreds and hundreds of bee species. For example, here at Impala, just on the campus, we have over 100 different bee species. And most bees are solitary. We are very familiar with the honeybee, that is a social bee living in a hive, in a colony, in a hollow tree. That's actually unusual amongst bees. Most of the bees in the world are solitary and they nest typically in holes and cavities that they excavate in the ground. So they dig their own nests in the ground and some of them nest in existing holes in wood, in old trees and dead branches and stems. What I'm going to do is to show you here why butterflies are important pollinators because as I unroll its proboscis which is the basically the mouth part of the butterfly it's made of a very interesting substance called resilin which is a substance that no matter how many times we you stretch it out it keeps folding back into its shape and because many butterflies have a proboscis and they are feeding on liquid food primarily nectar from fl from flower they are able to also serve as pollinators studying pollinators is really important because you have many situations where farmers are growing crops and they may not fully understand 
what's happening in terms of yield. And we've worked with a number of different farmers around the country where we found things like eggplant farming or passion fruit or mango or even coffee. Not just yield, but quality can be significantly improved through managing pollination. So we think about watermelons. Watermelon, which is grown primarily in the hot, dry regions, one county like Baringo sells about 700 million shillings of watermelon a year. That's a lot of money f going into farmers' hands. And watermelon is 100% dependent on pollinators. There are separate male and female flowers, and the bee has to make not just one visit, but many different visits, because it will take thousands of grains of pollen being deposited in a female flower, taken from male flowers, that will produce a nice healthy fruit. So I come from a coffee growing zone, and uh, we have coffee in our family, and I noted for many years, uh, much as we had put all the farm inputs, coffee production was just going down. Uh, the first objective was to collect all the flower visitors before I could discriminate and say that these are the pollinators, these are just floral visitors because this is the first day of its kind in Kenya. I noted that the bees were actually the ones that were making contact with the anthers and the stigma. That's how I got to know that they could be the, the pollinators. And one thing is that when coffee is not flowering, the crops are not flowering, even other crops, the bees need a refuge. And the only refuge they can get is through the, the weeds and other plants that are growing near the, the farms. When coffee is not pollinated, you'll get very small berries uh, called uh, pea berries. And if, uh, a, a good coffee berry, the fruit itself, has two ovules. It's a bean. In absence of pollination, it only forms one ovule. So, obviously, uh, the pollinated berry will be a higher grade than the pea berry. Yeah. And it will also be better in quality, in terms of uh, size. Uh, the, the berries are heavier. And then also, when uh, the coffee is uh, liquored, it will have a better taste and aroma. You cannot get grade AA in your coffee when you have the pea berries. Uh, double A or grade AA, of course it fetches better prices in the market and actually mostly it's what it is used for, for export. For your information, our coffee is the second best in the world. And now that even uh, this the the free, uh, the, the free trade associations, farmers should be able to bargain better prices for their coffee rather than converting everything into real estate. I tried uh, looking at issues of pollination among farmers, like for example, what pollinates coffee? Most farmers did not know, more than 50% of farmers didn't know. And they tell me that uh, bees are bad when they visit coffee, they eat the flowers, they make the flowers drop. Because the moment a coffee flower is pollinated, after three days, it dries up and drops. So they would not think it's a positive thing that it is showing that now fruits are setting. They take it negatively. So they persecute, they, they persecute the bees by even spraying. Good. Thank 
kila kiati ya nijao kukwati wa lakini utambe kukwe nijao ni nzuki eti wa na guwe ndia wadhi uko na weki ete vest kitu cha kile nijao uwe Ana tu dalam pelan pelan siapa nara? Besela ni ni view, ni ki. Ilo adi ko itu akan zau itu ambas asingi verar. Tu ko ambas ambinge. Nau kalakat dalo ubi nambe siapa nara? Besa ni ni. Kau nama sah buas. Langi wa kelu dia wa yelo. Langi wa yelo we dia we very toxic. Tu sah sah wa. Namu namu nu we dia antrona ko wajau. Antrona ko wanzogi. Lagi wa kerja with the awi wa blue, wa blue with the awi toxic with the awi obu. Tiap muka limu no, pau tu sah sah. Na with the awi environmentally friendly. Tiap sah sah wa. Na langi wa kata tu, ni weba. Wa kana, ni weba. With the awang lin. Ila wa mina kuasa ndawa, duka neteno. Pena kalibo keba. Ogu kandi kitu. Kasi wale tola ngiusu, hitha wa yellow, mudune, blue, green. Mbabe si ndusi hithi ya asiba, ni mwuzo wa maani chao? Mwesi ya asia, tigo? Na mwesi ya kwezi ya ni ya na madha rende. Wasisa kasoba, na kila kambu ni yonde. Kindu kuki hithi ya abu. Tisa wa sawa, nduwa chani beya, nduwa seni sejenda, nduwa seni yoshe, kana nduwa seni chao. Kindu kuki hithi ya abu. Tisa wa sawa, nundu pe na shirika ila idinisha ndawa hii, sika vika chaoni, sika vika sokoni. Onengi nini muenda amu kwa wandawa, ukezede ya nuwa wandawa, ndo manani jenwini, ndo manani feki, ndo manani iliata. Tisa wa sawa. Ila wadhi wawa ndao mtenu from any company, agrovetine, kendo chambe, ambo sisi chao, expired date. Tisa wa sawa, expired date ni muhimu sana. No kuna, no uwe ndawa, hi expired, di nuwashu. Ndendo kethi wa ndumio bu, mundu neti wena ekosi ya stock ilangu, nekanda ya mothela. Tuwa, nudu wa mothi uka kuna, munda ni kwa gu. Instead ya kila uzi ya, paikita kwekara. Paikita kuende ya, kanapa ya nangika completely. Tuwa, ndawa isi o nde si dhe ana miaka ya nara, miaka eli. Think about how do you use pesticides? Do you need to use them? Can you use them carefully? Follow the instructions if you do use them so that you limit the effect on pollinators. Where you can, stop using pesticides. Use other alternatives that are not toxic to bees. Pollinators are facing an uncertain future in many areas. As we cut down forests, as we burn charcoal, as we harvest sand as we do all these different things they actually impact habitats where pollinators live where they nest where they breed where they feed and forage the drylands like we are finding they have such a diverse species so it's time we also recorded what we have in the greater part of this country once now we have the baseline of what we have, then maybe a year down the line we can come and repeat the same experiment and know are the status changing for worse or for better. Uh, once we collect them from the trap, we, we make uh, envelopes and put the records on each envelope so that once we get back to the lab, we can be able to relax them, so we can be able to pin them and spread, spread their wings so that when you come to the museum, you can be able to see, like this is Caraxes Zulina from Kikome. We have all the details on the envelope. You know, Kikome, farmland, at what point, which date, and collected by who. Kina yangu mina ito mse Francis Kimaiyo Kiplagat. Mimi ni mkulima wakatika area hii ya Elgeo Marakwet County. Area hii ni mzuri sana kwa kilimo hii ya maembe sababu ikona choto, 
iko na iko na eh iko na inafanya maembe iwe tamu sana hii chua niko naeka 30 hapa ya maembe under plantation ya maembe na hii maembe niko na variety sita niko na maembe ya uh, apple mango ngoe tuko na tomi fantaik kate tuko na ken na hiyo maembe inafanya hiyo biashara mzuri sababu ina inaiva kwa different months so hii miti yangu inatuanga inatuanga 1000 kwa mfano miti moja ya maembe ikitoa 500 na use shilingi 20 20 na ukiwa na miti kama 20 sio utakuwa umepata elipu 20 maembe yangu inauzwa mpaka Nairobi mpaka kule Tanzania eh, eh, Uganda na hii tauni yetu yetu ya Eldred na eh, Kisumu mambo ya wadudu inaitwa fruit fly ni, ni mbaya sana sababu hiyo ndio ilikataza sisi maembe yetu yende ngambo lakini tumejaribu sana kusaidiana na watu ya Isibe na watu ya Kari so tume kama mwaka jana nimeuza maembe yangu 90% bila dudu ambao tumetumia kuna trabs tume tumetumia tena on hard on top of that one ni shamba imechulikana hata mpaka European Union unaisiona ile plan wamesema shamba hii ni clean hatuna hatuna dawa kwa matunda yetu hizo trabs zinawekwa eka moja kama ine ambao tunanunua 250 moja na inashika ile male peke yake alafu ile zingine female inakosa kuisha sababu male simeisha iso iso trubs it is only purposely ya ya fruit fly sio ile ile polileta sinatumiwa na bees So we have a young uh, praying mantis a nymph right here there it is crawling along it's crawling up the stem let's see if i can convince it to climb on my hand and the praying mantis is another group of predatory insect very important because they help us control other insects and this one here in particular is helping by eating some of the Uh, milkweed bugs as well as the aphids that are growing in the field house Sasa hivi ile watu wameanza kujifunzia mambo ya insects sasa tunaona tunajua tunajua hata greenhouse tunaweza kuweka hizi na carpenter bee na sasa zitakuwa inafanya kazi mara pili inatengeneza asali na inasaidia pollination hapo ndani Jua mimi napenda asali kibaya tu cha asali ni kitu kimoja inaoza meno Hakuna mtu mrina asali mwenye yako na meno yote Mimi nikiwa mmoja wao mm. <laughs> So najua ni sukari Na vile iko sukari ukitoka unaenda kutafuta si nilikwambia tuna collect huko hizi nest Ukienda huko si lazima utakula yako kidogo ndio lanje sasa una nafasi ya kupiga piga msiwagi huko tena msiwagi ni kuanga nyumbani hasa vile na kaa sana ndio na inaanza kukimba kukimba hiyo mashimo kwa meno inakubidi usichukue zaidi ya dakika ishirini baada ya kukula asali upige msiwagi upige hiyo uchafu itoke Kenya is blessed with an incredible amount of diversity. So it's really really important that we understand what is 
biodiversity. Biodiversity is all these different species and all of the interactions they have with other species, including plants, crops, and people. We have a website that you can visit that has a lot of information about pollinators. It's called discoverpollinators.org and there are many different uh, products available on that site freely for download, including a book, Our Friends the Pollinators. Conservation of pollinators is a must. We must bring bees back to our farms. Otherwise, all the other work we will do on coffee, be it all the inputs we use, will be in vain. Because this coffee I've said is amphicarpic, 50% in need of pollination. And we can only have pollinators if we conserve our Karura forest. What I can see now is housing estates. There's no way bees will live with, many, uh, with people in the houses. So we are destroying the habitats for the bees. We have a future, but we need to work towards their conservation and also to make people aware you know, people have just been taking pollination as a free service. It's just there. But it's time that now people took action to ensure that the pollinators survive. As a Kenyan scientist, I feel it's imperative that more young people in Kenya get involved in science and understanding nature. So even if you spend just a few minutes a day going out into your garden or your farm or your schoolyard, or if you're lucky and you live in an area where there's more wildlife, go and observe, look at things, learn about them, find out about them, write to experts, visit the National Museum, do things that will enable you to learn more about nature, but also to celebrate and understand it in your own life and share those experiences with others. And it doesn't take anything. You don't need any special equipment. All you need is patience and to be quiet Move slowly and you'll be able to see and understand a lot about me.